Hey Stalker, this is Evan, and today I've got a guide for your first 10 minutes in Reason. Now, if you're new to Reason 11, I want you to click down below to get your free guide to all of the effects in Reason, all of the instruments, all the devices, all wrapped into one. I basically managed to condense down to a couple of sentences each for all of these 40 plus things that are included with Reason. Just a couple of sentences to help you figure out what they're best used for, if you can ignore them completely because they're old legacy devices, or if they're the hottest thing since sliced warm bread. Not just regular bread, but warm bread. All right, let's dig into what your first 10 minutes of Reason are going to look like. So I've just got an open version of Reason 11 here. Not that exciting. So what I want to point out is that there are four main windows. The mixer, which also doesn't look that exciting at the moment. The rack, which is where you have your instruments. And the sequencer, which is where you have your recordings. Then you also have the browser, which is where you can search for sounds, either by typing them in or by navigating different folders like the Reason Sounds folder and then going to Bells, for example. You can open and close these and resize them at will, or you can go up to window and you can, for example, detach them. And in on a Mac, they'll open in separate tabs. In Windows, they will be separate windows that you can jump between. Um, you also have the ability to just hit the F keys, like F5, F6, and F7, to navigate around them. I like them detached. Also, if you have a multiple monitor set up where you got different computer screens, you can drag them onto different screens and you can see everything at once. So most of the magic happens in the rack section. From here, what you can do is you can either click on add device or drag in something you want to mess with here. So at the beginning, you have these drum uh, programs, and this is where I like to start. You've got sort of an MPC style drum machine, a drum just a regular old drum machine and a loop player. If you're starting out, loop player is a great place to start because it plays loops real easy. So what we'll do is we'll hit run on this loop. All right, you got a drum loop, but maybe that's not the style we want to go with. So let's instead go to the loop supply. These are all the loops that are included and let's do a hip hop loop. Um, let's try this. And so it's auto previewing, and we can turn the volume up or down on that. Let's listen to the loop now. All right, you notice it sounds different because it auto previews it in the tempo of the loop, but the song is actually set to a tempo of 120. So let's meet in the middle and do 90. That's usually a good tempo for hip hop. And now let's hear it play back. Cool. And we're going to add some other devices, but let's first also add a guitar loop, or maybe a bass loop, let's see. Um, why don't we look at four bass loops? Synth bass, sure. Right, what do we have here? There's not a lot to choose from built in, but it's really easy to buy loop packs that are compatible with this. So actually, let's go with a guitar loop. And let's do a electric rhythm guitar playing cherry rhythms. Who doesn't like a major scale? It loads in several variations. Let's listen to them together. All right, so we're gonna mix, we're mixing that up a little bit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the, sorry, to the sequencer here. It's, it's the untitled one. The other ones have subtitles, but the untitled one is the sequencer. And we're gonna select the draw tool. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna draw in a chopped loop. So these are the individual samples of that cherry guitar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pencil and I'm gonna try and remix this loop. Right. 
I don't know how this is going to sound. Let's see. Let's see. And what we need to do now is turn the loop playing off, and it's only going to play the notes we wrote in. I like it already. All right, well, that's the magic of reason. And now I'm going to just select this arrow. I'm going to hold down, or I'm just going to do control C, control V, copy, paste. So now we've got a new loop. But on the last variation, what we're going to do is we're going to draw it in really fast. And then we're going to scale. We're going to, I'm holding down, well, I'm going to hit W to select the pencil. And we'll do a fade in there. So again, let me just say, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Give a thumbs up. Let me know if you've got any questions about Reason. And also be sure to click on that link below to download your beginner's guide to all these devices because you'll be up and running way faster than if you're just trying to figure this out on your own. Cool. All right. So we've got sort of a hybrid loop and chopped thing going on. Now let's put in a piano part. Ah. My mouse is being a little pain in the butt. So we'll select Radical Piano. And let's open up a preset here. Let's do right upright. Let's see what this sounds like. And I've got my actual keyboard. So let's see. So I've got a little bit of latency just because I'm recording this live, but that's not quite what I'm looking for. So let's see about soft and fast jazz. And what I want to do is boost this curve up to make cool. So I'm not as bad as a piano as this sounds, but there is a, is a lag here between what I'm hearing and playing, which makes me sound worse. I'm pretty bad. All right, but that's easy enough to fix because what we're going to do is we're just going to hit Control A. We're going to select all of these notes and hit the quantize, but we're going to select quantize to quarters, and now that didn't do what we wanted to do, so we'll just move everything forward, and we can always just fix this. This was so messed up that it wouldn't even quantize, which is really what you want to be doing as a skilled musician. Um, so just so let's drag everything to where it should be, so let's see. So there. No, we don't want it on the on the quarter. So we just want to sustain a little bit more. And I want this one to be a little earlier. Copy this, control C, control V. Um, and what I want to do here is again kind of double that up just like we have on the guitar. So I'm gonna just hold down Alt and drag these over to make a copy. And let's remove the third so it's a little more pronounced. Cool, now let's add an effect to that piano. So I'm going to the rack again and I'm just gonna do an insert effect. And I'm going to first do a delay, the echo, which is going to make it sort of repeat and sound cool. Turn down the wet dry. And let's crank.
crank up the volume a little bit. And also, let's do some ping pong delay and a little more feedback just to make it more pronounced. All right, cool. Now let's lay down, that's maybe even a little brighter. And let's turn the, let's just pretend like the sustain pedal is down. I could automate that, but. Pump up that release time. Let's add a bass now. So I'm gonna go with the monotone bass synthesizer. going to do here just for simplicity's sake is copy the piano part. These are obviously not the right notes, but it's the rhythm I'm probably going to start with. If I could play it for real without the lag, I'd do it differently. But And now let's op increase these by an octave. Just optimize this, which is a great technique for simple bass lines. Let's set this to a loop until we get it dialed in. So I'm going to right click, set loop to selection. And now let's. Come on, Mr. Loop Player. Let's do some velocity stuff so that it pops a little more, grooves a little more. Let's hear it. Let's just dial in a little different sound. So now the last thing we're going to want to do is add a little melody on top of that. And for that, we're going to use the NNXT Advanced Synthesizer, or Advanced Sampler. Pardon. And where are we going to go with here? Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. How, how about some mats? Some vibes, perhaps? No. Definitely not. Maybe a vibraphone. Cool. So that's what I want to do. I just need to record it. And let's get a pre-click or a pre-count before I hit record. All right, and actually, let's turn the loop. This I actually want to play live and longer, so there's more of a variation. So let's copy the bass line across. And now let's record the vibraphone part. Oops, I was not on the right key to start with. Alright, All right, so we're going to copy. I'm going to use this razor tool here. Cut out the first take because that was garbage. Just delete it. Copy the first one, and now let's hear. And this first note is just a little late, so let's quantize you. No, nope, that's not where we wanted you to go. Change it to 16th. 
There we go. Just jumping a little forward, and same with you. You always want to check your performance to make sure that it sits in the right spot, but also that it grooves. You don't want to. Okay, my camera. You need to be quantized too. And actually, I want to change you. Let's see. I'm quantize you. All right, so there you have it. The only other things we're going to do is we're going to pop open the mixer, kind of quickly mix everything, and then you're good to go. You've got your first song and reason, and this is everything you need to know. Just download that beginner's guide because there are so many more features in Reason that I cannot even get into right now, and that it'll really help you speed things along. So I'm turning on the master bus compressor. first 10 minutes in reason, more or less. I hope you like this. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more great tips on making music in reason and pursuing your passion, making cool, cool music. Peace.